Hey y'all, Alex from Music Hub here, and today we'll be doing a review of the 1830 novel written by Stendhal and translated by Roger Gard, The Red and the Black. Stendhal, real name Marie-Henri Bell, born the 23rd of January, 1783, in Grenoble, died the 23rd of March, 1842, in Paris. Bell was part of an upper-class family that lived in France during both the Revolution and the subsequent rise of Napoleon, and even though he did actually go on to fight in Napoleon's army briefly, he retained a sort of outsider's view on many French political developments. The last half of his life was spent mostly in Milan doing ambassador work and pursuing what would become a fruitful career as a writer. Adopting the pen name Stendhal from the German town Stendhal, he wrote many fictional works as well as a few non-fictional works. His 1824 biography of Gioacchino Rossini contains some of the earliest examples of published music criticism. Noting here also that I am reviewing the translation done by Roger Gard, born in 1936, died in 2000, a scholar of 19th century English fiction, and a go-to translator for several other Penguin Classics releases. The Red and the Black is easily Stendhal's most famous novel, but it's one where the prestige has really grown over time since the author's death. This is largely due to its status, in many people's eyes, as the first ever psychological novel, a book where the inner thoughts of characters are interrogated and fleshed out, behaviors explained by thought processes and past experiences. It's a plot device that we take somewhat for granted now. It was used very heavily by the classic Russian authors Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. But reading this in context, you definitely get the sense that these stories take longer to play out here than, say, a Jane Austen novel would because Stendhal is dissecting everyone's motives. The main character of Julian Sorel is driven by a rather simple end goal, but the steps he takes to try and get there are subject to enough scrutiny that, frankly, it makes him a more three-dimensional character than he has any right to be. Julian's ambitions are framed by his relationships, and that is the biggest point this novel is trying to make. He comes from a humble background and seeks power and influence, much like his hero, Napoleon, and to do that, he utilizes his ability to seduce wealthy, influential women. This consistently works for him until he realizes that he is actually in love with one of the women, which leads into the book's quite unfortunate third act. There are a couple of interesting things about this. First, I think Stendhal treats the women in this book quite well. He's cited often as one of the first male feminist authors because of how he respects the women he writes about in his romantic narratives. And I think each of the women here retain a strong dignity about them, even as they're being wronged. Second, I think this dynamic of love being used as a weapon is an interesting and unique commentary for the period about power dynamics and how they can be manipulated in different ways. Other novels I've read certainly hint at it, but Stendhal is rather upfront about the sliminess of it all. I've heard this book compared to Jane Austen's works in terms of how it satirizes real-life social structures, and I see it to an extent, but it's not as cheeky as Austen's books are. I think this one is intended to be more of a sobering satire, like look how ridiculous this is, and then consider how not far away we are from actually being in this spot. It's a bit of a thinker in that sense. The writing itself is good. I like the guard translation, although I've heard that other translators make the narrative a bit more vivid, make it pop a bit, uh, so I may have to check them out in the future. But the narrative is what carries this story, and having really hardly heard of it before this project, um, I really enjoyed what I found here, and I would recommend it to people with the caveat that you have spent at least a few minutes reading about French society from the Napoleonic era and immediately afterwards. That context will help you appreciate it more. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on Music Hub.